Hi, I'm Andy Hertzfeld, and I've been working for the last year or so on developing an advanced user interface for Frox, uh, a company involved with making a, the home entertainment system of the future. I'm really excited about this system because I think it has the potential to create a revolution in the consumer electronics marketplace by combining a powerful computer as powerful as today's advanced workstations at the center of a complete home electronic system. So I'm going to launch it here. And while it's launching, make a couple apologies. Uh, the, the main one being that uh, the computer here has only 8 bits per pixel. So it can only display 256 simultaneous colors, whereas our real system will have 24 bits per pixel, be able to display 16 million colors. So uh, the main way the user interacts with the system is through what we call a magic wand pointing device much like a normal remote control, but only one button on it. Um, and the user will, will point at the screen. And this hand on the screen uh, tracks the movement uh, of, the, of the magic wand. So your, your way of manipulating the environment is by clicking on these little controls with your hand. You'll see that I can grab um, the volume control, and it'll actually make it louder. I can move the, vo the balance control to listen to just the left or to the, just the right. And I have a wide variety of other controls that, that I'll be showing you later. Probably the most important panel here is the switch box panel, which shows you through graphics and anim animation all the activity currently going on in the system. If we activate the CD, we'll see the notes emanating from the CD. When I hit pause on the CD, we'll notice that the CD stops spinning. When I start it up again, as it spins in real life, it spins in the switch box panel. In a similar fashion, if I pause the VHS cassette, it will pause. When I play, it will begin to animate again. We can switch between different screens using the command panel at the bottom. One click brings it up. There's a, a push button here to dismiss it. Uh, and then just clicking on an image of a screen will take us to that screen. So we'll look at a large video screen. It's paused here. We can get it going. Or we can go to uh, a variety of other screens. One of the most unique and extraordinary benefits of the Frock system is the way it deals with your media, such as your CDs. You can select the individual CDs by their album cover. I can go to a screen where the album covers are displayed pretty large. As we click, we can see a variety of different album images corresponding to each CD that's currently accessible to the user. I can even go to another screen here that has a, uh, a very large panel. So you can see every song on the CD display, uh, displayed all at once. Now we're playing Like a Rolling Stone. If we want to play Ballad of a Thin Man, we just click on it. Or just like Tompkins Blues. Desolation Row. So, uh, so that's the CD capability. I'll turn off the CD player now, uh, so it'll be a little easier to show you other dimensions of the system. In designing the Frox user interface, the greatest challenge was to create a user interface that is appealing both to a technophobe and a technophile. It's very hard to design an interface that is both simple and complex. So we solved the problem by providing complete end user configurability. So what I'm going to show you now is how the end user can use the toolbox to build their own unique environment. I can click on the command panel, and over to the right, I see I have this large toolbox. I can bring, when you, whenever you bring up the toolbox, it means the system is kind of under construction. I can move controls around, just changing their positions, or I can customize them in various ways. The toolbox itself consists of a bunch of boxes of parts. There's actually over a thousand independent parts in the Frock system that the user can manipulate. By clicking on a box, it opens. If I click on different entities in the boxes, such as this cuckoo noise, you'll hear a cuckoo sound. I'll take this cuckoo noise and drop it into the left half of a button. Makes the noise to reinforce it being taken. I'll grab the boing noise and drop it 
into the right of each script. From now on, this, this switch will sound like cuckoo point. So in a similar fashion, we're in control of all the colors you see on the screen. If I take this dab of blue and drop it here, that panel becomes blue. If I take this pink and drop it between the cracks, it becomes pink. I can change the color of the frog here to brown. There's lots of other interesting parts in the Toolbox browser. You'll see that the looks of the controls are really independent of their functionality. For example, if I want to change the way this commercial switch looks, but still make it a commercial switch, I can choose the way I want it to look from any of these alternatives, open one up, take its shape image, drop it on top of it, it'll change that one to be a different shape. Uh, we've seen that we can change the looks of these controls, but none of that really matters unless we can change their meaning. So the meaning of a control is encapsulated in these little nuggets of functionality called scripts. In fact, the system will come with hundreds of such scripts uh, that can be dropped into any of dozens of different controls. Let's look at the script associated with the Stop CD button. I can just click on that. Up it comes, open up the script, and we'll see that the script for the Stop CD button is very simple. Just it's telling the CD to stop. In a similar fashion, this button here uh, is an eject button. When I press on it, it would eject uh, the current CD. I can get a different script that, say, is the play CD function and drop that into here. Now it becomes a play button, or now it would become a pause button. So by dropping in scripts, uh, I can change the meanings of any given control. But the real power comes in when end users can design their own scripts. I think it would be a good idea now to maybe write our own script from scratch so we can see how easy it is to, to customize the system. Okay, so let's, let's turn this button here into a button so that instead of stopping the CD, every time we press it, it'll change the color of whatever panel we're in. So we can get up the toolbox browser, open up the script box, and we'll see the special script with the lightning bolt. Just like for new screen, when we drag this one out, it will create an entirely new script. Okay, and so we'll make a little program that will change the color of whatever panel we're in. We'll use this pick operation, which says pick one out of a box. And then we'll put this box of colors next to it. So we've effectively made it say pick a color. We'll use the set color primitive to take that color we picked, and what we'll set with it is the color of the current panel. So there it is. We've just created a little program to set the color of the current panel. We can take that script and drop it into a button here. Put away the browsers, and we'll see that when we press on the button, it'll change the color of the panel we're in. If we hold the button down, it'll repeatedly execute the script, changing the color repeatedly. I'm really proud of the system because I think it has the potential to redefine how a user interacts with their audio and video environment. It's a revolutionary system because it gives the end user the same level of control over his environment that a programmer typically has. Uh, the end user is in control of every color, sound, and shape that they see on the screen. The other most revolutionary aspect of the Frock system is that it's a completely open software-based system. Unlike traditional consumer electronic systems, features can be added just by sticking in a floppy disk. So the system never becomes obsolete. So the Frock system that an end user buys in 1991 will be that much better in 1994. So I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, this demo as much as I've enjoyed creating the system. Thanks.